In 1944, Dr. Harry Wexler was about to prove he was no ordinary meteorologist. As a hurricane approached the east coast of the US, Wexler prepared to observe it by flying right into the eye of the storm. Sir, are you ready for your flight? I'll be right there. It was the first time a scientist had attempted this type of first-hand research. But he was a pioneer, and he was willing to take a chance. Oh, I think he was truly curious, and he thought that the plane could uh, go out and bring back useful information. Back in the 1940s, hurricanes were a complete mystery. There were no eyes in the sky. There was no way to tell what was out there except scattered ship reports. Um, and that was not even in real time, so it was guesswork. Harry Wexler was a curious and brilliant scientist, educated at Harvard and MIT. Mathematics was his speciality, but it was weather that was his passion. Harry Wexler never turned down a challenge. Harry was a uh, gregarious, uh, very outgoing kind of fellow, uh, extremely smart, very bright, and was interested in, in just about everything that had to do with meteorology. Wexler and his pilot flew into the hurricane in a US Air Force bomber, battling winds of up to 200 kilometers per hour. On reaching the eye of the storm, the plane was suddenly sucked upward by strong vertical wind currents. Until this moment, scientists had assumed hurricanes only had horizontal currents. It was a major advancement in hurricane research, but the new information was not helpful. The hurricane sank five ships, killing 344 sailors. Dozens more people died when it made landfall. To save lives, a hurricane warning system had to be created. This meant a way to track the hurricane long before it reached land needed to be developed. The inspiration Wexler required came from an unexpected source. The British science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke, who had been following Wexler's research. One day in the early 1950s, Harry Wexler opened his mail and had a letter from Arthur C. Clarke asking him his ideas about a meteorological satellite. It was an idea ahead of its time, as satellites were still at a concept stage. Both the Soviet Union and the US were racing to launch the first into orbit. Wexler was intrigued. That led Wexler to think about all the things you might be able to see from outer space looking down on the atmosphere. Clark really did lead Harry Wexler into a train of thought which was very fruitful and helped develop some of the early technologies for uh, weather satellites. Wexler imagined a satellite that would orbit above the Earth taking pictures of weather patterns while they were forming. He saw the satellite orbiting around the North and South Poles, crossing the same lines of latitude at the same time every day. Each time it passed a particular point, it would take photographs and transmit them back to Earth. It would take a huge amount of resources to make. He took his idea to everyone he knew in government. For years, nothing happened. Then, in October 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the world's first artificial satellite. Wexler's idea was given the go-ahead, and NASA began to build his weather satellite, Tyros-1. Wexler's idea was given the go-ahead, and NASA began to build his weather satellite, Tyrus-1. Harry was right there, able to shape the early developments. Wexler's idea required two cameras, one that was wide-angle to photograph 2,000 square kilometers at a time, the other a high resolution for close-ups. On the 1st of April, 1960, at Cape Canaveral, Florida, 
Wexler's satellite was ready for launch. The dramatic moment of launching. All goes perfectly. Tyros went into orbit 800 kilometers above the Earth. It circled the planet once every 99 minutes. Wexler waited anxiously for the first set of images. If the pictures were not clear enough to show weather patterns, the mission would be a failure. However, the results were even better than Wexler had hoped. The first pictures from Tyros, they clearly showed ice in the uh, Gulf of St. Lawrence. They showed cloud formations that could be matched to the storm theories of the time. This is actually a holy grail of meteorology. But it was not until September 1961 that Tyrus faced its first test. Hurricane Carla was headed towards the Texas Gulf Coast. Carla was the largest storm uh, ever that, that landed on the U.S. soil. It's larger than Katrina. Tyrus photographed Carla as it formed in the Gulf of Mexico, allowing meteorologists to track her. It gave authorities time to evacuate more than half a million people. Harry Wexler's vision was saving lives. Harry's contemporaries uh, called the weather satellite Harry's dream. Harry Wexler's contribution really marked a turning point in our quest to get a complete view of the Earth's weather, uh, a, a view that can be shared internationally, that can cover the oceans and the southern hemisphere and remote areas. And so it really is the fulfillment of an ancient quest of the meteorologist. Enabling them to predict and prepare for whatever was approaching.